Okay, so I've made my ground floor floor or my lowest lower level floor, but now I want to make this upper level floor that has the balcony shape uh, added to it. So very quickly, I'm just going to make this floor. So don't worry if you've just done this, I'm just going to do it very quickly. I've opened up my O2 FL level 2 floor plan. I'm going to click on the floor button. Again, above the line, if you're clicking on the arrow all the time, again, you've got to think about options here. That doesn't matter. We just need to click above the line to get the default option. And then really quickly, picking on the inside face of each wall to get a rectangular shaped floor. Tick to finish. And if it asks you to uh, cut overlapping uh, geometry out of the wall, say yes. And I'm going to click into empty space so my floor isn't selected anymore. And I can show you how to select it again. So again, don't worry if you've already done this. Just um, for the people who haven't, I'm going to go into section one by double clicking to open it. And there I can see my upper level floor. Of course, my lower level floor was done previously. So if I select the upper level floor, and then click Edit Boundary. It's going to come up with a list of all of the views where I can see the sketch. In other words, the rectangular shape. And I'm going to use the second floor plan in that list there, which happens to be the one I had open previously. I'm going to click Open, and I'm back into that floor plan. So this is where it gets a bit more interesting, because for the first time, you'll need to use the sketch tools to draw this shape here. Now the exact dimensions don't matter, it's just to give you some practice drawing lines and curves. And so, like I was saying before, in the draw panel there, it was using the pick walls tool, which is the default option when you're making a floor or a roof. It lets you pick, of course, walls, but we don't have any walls to pick where this balcony goes. So Pick walls is the last option in that draw panel, but all of the other options will let you make lines directly. So here, the line tool obviously draws straight lines, rectangle makes rectangles, and then you have polygon tools, circle tool, arc tools, and uh, some tools for some other curves. Okay, so again, I'm going to go to the um, line tool, the first one. And because the size and the exact position doesn't really matter. I'm just going to click a point on the edge here, on the inside edge of the wall. And I'm going to come out a certain distance. Again, it doesn't matter what it is exactly. So two meters roughly would be fine. Now I want to curve. So I'm going to click on the button below the line tool, which you'll see is the start end radius arc tool. So the first arc button there. And then you can see it will let me pick a point. If I haven't pressed escape or anything, I can just pick a new point above the first one. And then by moving the cursor now, you can see it's giving me a curve. So the arc tool is similar to the one in AutoCAD, but just works a little bit differently. So you give the start point and the end point, and then you come back and do the curve. Now I'm going to click on the line tool again in the draw panel. So that'll go back to drawing straight lines. I don't need to cancel. It will just continue from the arc I've drawn. And I'm going to take it to the inside of the wall again. Oh, you've got to give the first the two points at the beginning and the end, and then you move the mouse to give the curve. Yeah. I'll have a look in a sec. But, um, OK, so that's the first step, just drawing the shape. And you'll be able to work that out. If it's not working for you, it's just a matter of uh, persisting and you'll get that to work. So the button below the line tool. Yeah, the first arc tool, not the second one. That one. Yeah, that's it. Click on there. Yeah, and then, yeah, so start there. Yep, go up and then make sure it's just a straight line above. Yep, straight line. That's it. Click. Oh, I just do it my eye. That's fine. Oh, anything. What you've got's fine. So just click. Yep, that's right. Doesn't matter. And now move the mouse and you'll see it'll give you a curve. So if you move it down, it'll be easier to control. There we are. That's it. No, no. Yep, that's okay. You can adjust it later. 
I'll show you some tricks for adjusting it in a minute as well. So as long as you've got a shape like this that you can work with, yep, it's fine. So really what I need to show you is how you then make that closed because Revit's different to AutoCAD in this way. You remember I was saying that Revit doesn't trim as well as AutoCAD does? And this is an example where you'll see that. So we need to uh, basically cut the line at the two corners here. Right, so notice how this line and this line have a gap. It's hard to see, but there is a gap between this corner and this corner. So that's what I need to make. I can't just trim the line using the cutting edge at the top and the bottom because Revit doesn't work that way. So what you'll need to do instead is use the split. So that's the tool that I don't think you've used before. Up in the modify panel, it's the first of the little buttons. So you'll see there's a group of nine smaller buttons in the modify panel there. So that group of nine, top left, is split element. So then you just need to break that that vertical line, sorry, anywhere in the middle, roughly. So you can see it's giving me a blue dot to show me where I've broken it. Now I can use trim to corner and join the top like this and then the bottom like this. So I've broken the line. So trim to corner is the last of the big buttons. Yeah. But if you've done that, then you should be able to finish it, tick to finish, and it will let you. If you haven't done it right, no. So say no, yep. Oh, so then trim to corner this one here. Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, sure. That's right, exactly. Okay, so if that's worked, when you click on the tick button, it'll let you finish, but it will ask you, would you like the walls to attach? And definitely here, say no. Okay, I'll come back and I'll show you very quickly what would happen if you said yes, just to get you thinking a bit more about the attach tool. You might remember we used attach to make these walls extend up to the bottom of the roof to give us that gable infill, the triangular panel. Now, if I, ex if I do the same though and attach the walls to the floor, that's not good. We don't want an opening that big. So that's why we're not attaching when it asks us to attach the wall to the floor. Say no. That's say no, that's right. Exactly, exactly, that's right, yeah. So usually you say yes, 